like to point out is there has been nothing yet that I have brought the court and asked for that anyone has told me no. You guys give us what, what we ask for, when we ask for it, and we're appreciative of it. Well, you know, everything we asked for you at that workshop meeting, you guys came through with. Welcome back to another Shark Show. Today we're doing another episode about the continuing ESD workshops. We're on workshop number two. And this was Thursday's Commissioner Court, March 18th of 2021. And as you remember, ESD and De Cordova Bend Acton area put out a petition and got enough signatures to at least be put through the Commissioner's Court to see if they would put on the ballot uh, to try to have an ESD in their area, their geographical area. Yeah, now the Commissioner's Court, they get to decide if that goes to the ballot, right? Exactly. So it'll be up to the vote from the commissioners, uh, three out of five needed, and we'll see if it does go eventually to the voters. But through these first two meetings uh, with the citizens' involvement and even some of the people that have come to us, you know, volunteer firefighters and others, um, you know, there's a lot of talk going on, and that's good. That's good to get everybody's input, and, um, you know, that's what these workshops are for. So we obtained some information from the De Cordova Acton Volunteer Fire Department on what they needed equipment-wise for 2021. And I guess they had given this information um, to the commissioners. And it's totaling $549,874, everything from bunker codes to SCBA mask, gear. And then at the very bottom, they have a 3,000-gallon tanker, new, not refurbished. Yeah. And that's a huge portion, it's 320,000 of the 550,000 just about. So they gave a, um, a sheet, a list of their needs to the commissioners, which is a start. And that's kind of what we've been asking for the whole time, isn't it, from each volunteer fire department? Yeah, in order to really kind of make an educated decision on any of this ESD stuff, there there needs to be some kind of a budget plan, five-year, 10-year plan, something presented to the commissioners for them to be able to make an educated decision on this. Yeah, and I think three out of the nine VFDs have submitted these. So, you know, we're making some progress in that regard. And all these workshops are about, and this whole ESD debate is trying to figure out what the best way forward is for our fire departments yeah and not only that you, you want or we want certainly we want the safety of the firefighters is you know number one right there with you know using the tax dollars wisely and making sure that they have the equipment so they're safe and they have the equipment to help the citizens of hood county right i think everybody's in agreement on that part we want to make sure our firefighters are taken care of that the fire departments have exactly what they need and i think that's one thing that we all absolutely agree on and you know as far as the day cordova petition goes we need to be thinking about what's best for the entire county and do this methodically and make sure like a lot of these guys said we don't fall into some of these traps that a lot of people with good intentions have fallen into. And it's the people that suffer in the end. You know, when you've got stations, you know, battling each other, saying, well, I'm not going to go in until the paid guys leave, or, or they're an ESD and they're volunteers, it can cause some friction. And we just want to make sure that we're doing this all the right way. Right, because once this is done, it's done. There's no undoing it. Right, it's very, very difficult, and it's never been done. You know, to undo it, you have to have a certain percentage of voters that come back and so you're right once you get the tax it'll never never be brought back but i think the theme of this and and once again we want everybody to go to the county website and watch this last one was a little over three hours long but please watch these and get the information for yourself but you know you look at some of this and you just have to say why would we even think about piecemealing you know three esds two seven nine it's it seems to me that through the talks over the last two workshops that you know the, either the county step in and start paying more and and the the fire chiefs each get their budgets to them and they get what they need but having more than one esd like a county-wide esd having more than that seems like it's kind of piecemeal 
Yeah, it's and it's creating a whole nother level of government, but this level of government isn't necessarily accountable to the taxpayers. So it, it you open up a whole sort of Pandora's box when you do this, as opposed to doing a whole countywide ESD, or like you said, letting the county take care of it. But in order for the county to see if they can meet the budget needs of the volunteer fire department, they have to have all those budgets handed to them to see if that's something that's even viable for them to do. You know, and a big problem throughout this process has been the communication. You know, they said it several times. I think the fire marshal said, hey, you know, last time we went to you guys, we got everything we wanted and more. Um, one thing that I would like to point out is there has been nothing yet that I have brought the court and asked for that anyone has told me no. But maybe we're not asking for enough and maybe, you know, the communication from the fire chiefs to the county, there's a breakdown there somewhere and I don't know exactly where that is, but, uh, you know, a lot of people say a closed mouth don't get fed, right? Right. You right. Know. You look at the money that the county has already spent and is spending on you know, the fire protection. And then if one ESD comes in, will the county still pay for that ESD? What happens to the equipment? There's so many things involved that, you know, and even what was brought up in the second uh, workshop was, do we even need an ESD at this point? If the county comes in and funds where they need to be properly, is it two years, three years, five years where we need to look at, you know, the paid, compensated, and then we got into the paid and compensated debate, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, that, you know, came out, and I thought it was funny as Matt Hutzel, the chief out of Toller, said, you know, eventually we're going to get to where we have a paid fire department. Wooten was real quick to say, no, no, it's a staffed fire department, <laughs> staffed fire department. They don't want to call it what it is. It's a paid fire department. Right. And, you know, we're not the size of Fort Worth or Dallas or anything like that. So everybody says our volunteer firefighters are second to none. Oh, yeah. You know, in the state, in the nation. And we've got great volunteer firefighters. I would love to see the firefighters have all the gear they need, all the protection they need, and the equipment they need to service the areas, whether it's the fire apparatus, the EMS apparatus, and then let's go from there. And if we start having a shortage of volunteers, then you move into the ESDs. But I'd like to see the county step up and pay what is required because it is a core function of government for the fire department. You know, and it was cool to see this. We don't see a consensus a lot on the commissioner's court, just given the makeup of it. But everybody behind the dais the other day said, no, we want to help you guys. Like, we want to get you funded to where y'all can provide the best service possible. You know, that's something that they are all in agreement on. And and I would say 99% <laughs> of the people are. Yes. I mean, that's fire protection. You want the firefighters protected. You want the citizens protected. But, you know, let's get into a couple of speakers. And, you know, Chief Ron Becker came up from Crescent did an excellent job of giving the pros and the cons of the ESDs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Courtney, what do you think about some of the things that Ron said? Well, he brought up some great points and he was extremely objective in, in all the points that he made. He's seen both sides of it. He's seen it work really well and he's seen it not work so well. And he brought up some points that the commissioner's court, if they do decide to go with this ESD, that the citizens need to be made aware of. And one of those points was, you know, what happens to the tax dollars that the county is currently charging and using for fire department and fire department protection? Are they going to continue to give that money to the fire departments or is that going to go away? And it's kind of a gentleman's agreement. Like if they say, this set of commissioners say, well, we're, we're going to keep that with the fire departments. We're not going to take it away. That can change. That's something that can change with the commissioners. So just because it's in place now doesn't mean it won't be in place later. If ESD repair money goes into a truck, then this statute says the ESD owns it. And I think that's an extreme position, and I can't imagine us getting into that tippy, that type of a fight. But you read the language, and it's a little bit scary. And, you know, that he talked about the statute, right, in there, and it was kind of iffy that if, let's say, the county paid for the fire truck, but they were doing maintenance on it, it technically could be part of the ESD. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there will be some issues, but I think in the long run, we, we have the right people in place to work on this. Yeah. And where it's beneficial, once again, for the firefighters and the citizens. Another one of the things that Ron Becker brought up was that 
when the commissioners, if it makes it to the ballot, they can put a stipulation on there saying an ESD up to six cents instead of the 10 cents that the state says is the cap. I believe they did that in one of our surrounding counties, and it seems to work fairly well. Chief Becker did an excellent job of explaining both sides. He went into just about everything that the ESD covers, everything from the ISO ratings, insurance that it covers, and the fire code. Because another problem that we could have is if you have three or four ESDs or seven or eight, each one could have their own fire code. So you could be a builder here in Hood County and have to build to a certain spec on one side of the street And then if you're building a house on the other side, you could have a different fire code. But there's nothing that stops your uh, ESD commissioners from putting a fire code in for one little area and a fire code for another one and however they choose to do it. So when we look at the fire codes, I think it would be better having a county-wide fire code than just piecemeal it together once again that you might get from the ESDs. And, you know, I think we're heading towards, hopefully, you know, an overall one county, either ESD when it's time, maybe two, four, five years, whenever, you know, the commissioner's court and the citizens say, hey, I think it's time. But right now, let's see if the commissioner's court can put in what they need. Yeah, and I've heard nothing but support from them that they want to do this. They want to meet the needs. Tell us what you need. We'll make sure you get it. So let's give them a chance to do their job. And, you know, some of the speakers were pretty hard on the commissioners and the county historically saying, hey, we've been dealing with underfunding for years. But again, if you don't take to them what you need and say, hey, we need this to provide this core function of government, you're not going to get it. Right. If you never ask, the answer is always no. That's right. That's right. Because they don't know, right? Exactly. Right. And, you know, Rick Fry came up and spoke, and Rick's been in firefighting for 41 years. He was the chief in Hearst for a while, so he has a lot of knowledge both as a firefighter and a chief. And he did a really good job kind of summing up to the commissioner's court on uh, his experiences and what he felt was needed for Hood County. One of the deals is our forecasts are way low. Uh, A couple meetings ago, we had a million dollars more in sales tax than projected. Our projections ought to be better than that, guys. I'm just going to tell you. And if they're not, you need to change it. So if you have a million dollars sitting out there that's that's not committed, then you need to look at that. How do we put that money to work for the citizens? He made the case that, look, we've been underestimating the sales tax revenue every year. And when we do that, that money that we underestimated, let's say it's about a million dollars a year for the last several years, that money can only be spent on certain things and buying fire trucks or new bunker gear or air packs for everybody's not one of them it has to go to the debt and he made the case that it does a disservice to the community when becky does that through the auditor's office you're right nate we did some research on you know the sales tax and the underestimation that becky was doing and and we figured about a million dollars for the last three or four years she was estimating at 3.9 million. It came out to almost $5 million for sales tax. And I know that's gonna fluctuate a little bit, but using it the way that Becky does it on the back end of trying to pay off debt, that if we estimate our sales tax the proper way, then we can take the million dollars, since it's already four point something or $5 million, and add that into the fire department budget and not have to raise taxes for that portion. Right. So if it was budgeted correctly, then we could budget the fire department correctly as well. Yes. Yeah. And some other things on the tax side that we've heard people talk about is, you know, for instance, I live in Precinct 3, but I won't be in the De Cordova Acton ESD, yet I'll still be paying taxes. And part of my taxes will go into that area for the ESDs. So I think there's going to be some problems with people going, all right, you're already taxed. You're taxing your people in your area for an ESD and you're taxing people outside your area that are paying for the taxes. And then on the other side, you have you two are in the ESD. Yeah, I live in the ESD. And so, you know, when we pay the property taxes, if there's an ESD, we're going to be paying that, which should cover all the fire protection for our house. But the county is still taxing us for fire protection in the rest of the county. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like being double taxed there. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and it really is. So, you know, there's some things that they're going to have to work out on the tax side for the county. That's why we kind of lean towards the county wide. Right. And having this all under one umbrella, letting the county commissioners take care of this until that need of an ESD is here in Hood County. <laughs> right. Looking at the bigger picture from all angles, that seems like the most logical um, answer to the problem that we're having. I will say this, though. Uh, the guys out of the Acton de Cordova Volunteer Fire Department and Toller, they seem 100% dead set on this. You know, those commissioners and everybody at the dais was offering them up to like $5 million, taking their budget from 1.2 right now, all things considered, to 5.2 or 5.5 million, and that still wasn't enough. And it makes you wonder, like, is this about the money or is it about the control? And hopefully it's about the citizens and getting them fire protection and protecting the firefighters. And we've spoken to a lot of different volunteer firefighters and we've, you know, been in contact and they've called us and um, a lot of them just want to remain volunteer that we have talked to. And if they can get the equipment and bunker gear and the gear that they need to stay safe, they're ready to just rock and roll until we finally grow enough for a true ESD. And at that point in time, I think it would probably be better suited as a countywide. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to basically answer a lot of the questions that people have as far as where their tax money is going and being double taxed. And, you know, that's one thing I love about our volunteer fire department here in Gregory. They truly have a servant's heart. And kudos to them and what they do for our citizens and everyone in this county. Through Blue Shark, we always like to see who's involved and who the players are and, and things like that. So, you know, we have, of course, the commissioner's court. We have the other fire chiefs from the volunteer fire departments coming in and, and everybody's putting in um, their knowledge, experience on, on things. And then we have people always somehow always come in from Austin, right? <laughs> yeah. Why? So, <laughs> Why is Austin coming in? Right. So here comes somebody coming in from Austin and it's the attorney, Ken Campbell. And, um, you know, he's, he's there to help out the ESDs. He's hired by the ESDs. And um, he's, he's hired, I guess, through Acton right now to do some of their paperwork and legal work. And he's associated with um, an organization called Safe D, S-A-F-E dash D. And you want to explain a little bit about that, Nate? Yeah, Safe D is a taxpayer-funded lobby. And just real briefly, if you're not familiar with that term, that's when a taxing entity pays people to go down to Austin and lobby the legislature to represent them so they can find ways to tax you more. They're using your own tax dollars to send lobbyists to Austin to tax you even more. And you're, you're right, Nate. You know, Safe D is an organization that a lot of the ESDs belong to, and it's very similar to TAC, uh, Texas Association of Counties, and TML, Texas Municipal League. And... What they are basically is a taxpayer funded lobby group because the ESDs get their money from the citizens and taxes and they pay that to Safe D, in turn does legislative work and they give workshops in schools and things like that. Yeah. And I found their legislative uh, platform off the Safe D website and there's some interesting stuff in there. They've got a legislative priority that says, hey, we want to change the rules to make it easier for ESDs to not have to go through a full audit. I'm sorry, but any government entity should be subject to a full audit at any time. That's exactly right. The more transparency, the better, right? Absolutely. That's what we're all about. They're trying to propose a constitutional amendment um, to put in the interest and seeking fund, which means that you can save so much a month, you can use it to buy off debt. So not only will you use that 10 cents, but now we'll tax you on more so you can pay off more debt that you incur. So when they say it's just a dime, <laughs> it may be just a dime now, but you know this group is pushing for higher and higher taxes. And our local VFD out of Acton is associating themselves openly with this group. That to me is cause for a little bit of concern and questioning. And the attorney Ken Campbell has been at this for since the 90s i think he's been working with the esds he's a volunteer firefighter himself i think his family members are so you know i'm sure he has a heart for firefighters and and the esd route and 
you know, he said in uh, these meetings that he gets paid two hundred dollars an hour, and and I I get it. You know, everybody has to make a living and do their part. Um, but just so the people in Hood County know where Safe D and Ken Campbell are coming from, back in the seventy eighth regular session, and now this was two thousand three, so it was a while back. But uh, Ken Campbell was commissioner of one of the ESDs, and he went and he was a witness for Safe D. And there was a bill that was brought forth, SJR 29. And what that said was that they wanted to authorize the commissioner courts of participating counties to levy a tax on the ad valorem property tax in the districts not to exceed 20 cents. So there was a bill that he testified on and witnessed for raising it from 10 cents to 20 cents. So he was in favor of that. Yes, and you know that that might be his job as maybe I don't know if he works as a, a legislative liaison, but that's what's coming with ESDs, and they're going to try to put forth legislation. And granted, that was years ago, but um, things haven't changed. So once you get that out of the county commissioner's hands, you know it's kind of like buyer beware. You're dealing with a whole new taxing entity. Yeah, and you're stuck with it. But there is nothing that indicates that we're going to be able to get rid of an ESD if this turns out to be a debacle. Right. And remember, there are elected county commissioners. They're elected. These are appointed. So if we start, you know, having our taxes raised up, you know, from 10 cents to 20 cents, interest and in sinking funds, you know, we're going to be paying quite a bit. And who's going to, you know, be liable for this? Yeah, there's no time out. Stop. Right. We're not doing this. Yeah, We're the, stuck. <laughs> the voters have no direct connection to the people that would run an ESD. Right. Other than the commissioners, and I guess you could always go back to your county commissioners, and how are you going to do it with 45, if we have nine ESDs, you know, ESD commissioners? So that, you know, it brings you back to that countywide eventually, right? You know, if the county can't get to the point where they can fund properly our fire protection and the firefighter safety, then it may be time in a few years to do that ESD. But if we do an ESD, I sure hope it's only one. You know, the biggest thing I gathered from this workshop was that we are at the very early stages of overhauling the way Hood County does fire protection. For a long time, there's been a communication gap between the volunteer fire departments and the commissioners. That has all come out. No, nope, it's hard to deny that at this point. The meeting that happened between the fire chiefs last year was any indicator. I mean, look at what came out of that. They got a 60-something percent increase in their stipends. They got some new air packs. They started doing fire engine overhauls. They got all kinds of stuff, everything they wanted and more. If that is an indicator, let's give our current commissioner's court a chance here, who seems to be unified on yeah, it certainly seems that way. There, there's consensus across the board that we want to make sure our fire department is taken care of and that they're safe and our citizens are safe. So giving them that chance, getting those budgets in to see if they can meet those budgets and getting what they need, everything they ask for, let's give them that opportunity. Maybe one day we might be where we need an ESD. I'm just not certain we're there yet. Right. Let's, let's give the county an opportunity uh, for maybe a couple of years to start adding things into the budget for the fire department and seeing how this goes with the volunteers. And, you know, you may see a spike in volunteers if you start getting bunker gear for everybody and really good equipment. And we'll just kind of take it from there and see how, you know, Hood County grows. But, you know, go back, please. And if you're watching this video, go see the Hood County Commissioner's Court from Hood County. And watch this and listen to Chief Becker and listen to uh, Chief Fry and, and these people talking about what's going on because it affects everybody in Hood County. And once again, the firefighters, that's a core function of government. And that's what our tax money should be spent on. Not anything other than the core functions. So this is very important to the taxpayer. It's very important to Hood County. And I believe it was Rick Fry that said, when we do this, let's make sure we do it right the first time. So let's get all the information. Let's see the commissioner's court working really hard to get the firefighters the equipment 
that they need. Guys, we appreciate all the support that we're getting from everybody. Uh, it's tremendous. I think we all uh, really appreciate that, and we're glad that more people are paying attention to local politics. We're here trying to make it more accessible for you. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe uh, when you see our links on Facebook, YouTube. And if you would like to support Blue Shark financially, uh, we do sell these hats that you see a couple of us wearing up here. Uh, we also sell some gray t-shirts with either the logo centered on the front or the logo over on the side of the t-shirt. Uh, those have the American flag on there too, so that's nice. We also sell Blue Shark tumblers. Once again, thank you for tuning in to Shark Show. We will keep you updated on more of the ESD workshops that are coming up in the future. And like I said, this is a very important thing that the citizens and taxpayers of Hood County need to pay attention to. And it's always Shark Show that's shining the light on your elected officials. Shark Show out.